Hello, I'm Arthur Jaco, and I will present you the work we have done on the implicit regularization of random feature models. So I will first give a small uh, summary of our results, and then I will go into details. So the idea behind random features is to do linear regression on a choice of p random features, which are sampled with a certain covariance kernel k. And what happens is that as p goes to infinity, as the number of random features goes to infinity, uh, this random feature predictor is going to converge to the kernel rich regression predictor with the same kernel k. So, so, so this suggests that random features are a good approximation of kernel rich regression, but we want to know exactly what happens for finite number of features p. And uh, so what we want to study is actually the distribution of the random feature predictor for a fixed training data set uh, of size n and for a fixed ridge lambda. And uh, so, and it turns out that if the random features are Gaussian, then the distribution of the random feature predictor is actually a mixture of Gaussian. So that's our first result. And a consequence of this uh, first observation is that in the ridgeless regime, when lambda goes to zero, and in the over parameterized regime, when p is bigger than n, actually we have that the uh, expected random feature predictor is equal to the kernel predictor, even for finite p. Which suggests that so, which shows that actually in this specific ridgeless over parameterized regime, the random feature predictor is an unbiased estimator for the kernel predictor. However, it turns out that outside of the specific regime, things are different, and we observe an implicit regularization effect in the sense that the expected random feature predictor is close to the kernel rich predictor, but not with the same ridge. We see that we computed the random feature predictor with the original ridge lambda but it's close to the rich kernel predictor with an effective ridge lambda tilde, which is larger than the original ridge. And we give formulas for the effective ridge in a sense, it's defined as the solution to the following equation, which, which is in terms of the DIs, which are the eigenvalues of the kernel gram matrix. So which shows the uh, implicit regularization of uh, random features. Now that we have described the expected random feature predictor, the next thing that we need to show is to show the, the variance of the random feature predictor. And what we see is that actually the variance of the random feature predictor scales with the derivative of the effective ridge. So again, the effective ridge plays an important role to study the variance. And this derivative explodes at p is equal to n and lambda goes to zero. So there's an explosion of the derivative, which leads to an explosion of variance. And this is what leads to the double descent phenomenon that has been observed in random features. However, if you are away from this problematic uh, explosion of variance, for example, if lambda is bigger than zero, then you are able to bound the variance of the random feature predictor and show some concentration for large P and N, which shows that then the risk of random features is close, the expected risk of random feature is going to be very close to the risk of the kernel predictor, which allows us to, if we want to study the generalization of random features, we can just go back to results about the generalization of kernel methods, which is very uh, useful. Okay, so that's the summary. So let's discuss our setup. So as I said, we have a fixed uh, training set and uh, we consider the kernel predictor for kernel K. And, uh, what we then study are random features, which are uh, p random functions. Actually, in our case, we are going to study Gau random features, which are Gaussian processes with covariance k. And we write gamma for the ratio of number of random features to number of training points. And what we then do with these random features is uh, linear regression. So what we have is the data matrix, which is the value of the random features on the training set, which, uh, and then we minimize for the parameters theta, we minimize the reconstruction class plus some reach term. And we get an optimal parameters formula for the optimal parameters and for the prediction. So the prediction are just the value of the random feature predictor on the training set, which is given by this formula. And then uh, we get the random feature predictor, which is a linear combination uh, of the random features with respect to the optimal parameters theta. So that's, that's our setting. So before I uh, describe the result, I want to show you a bit how this random feature predictor behaves as a function of the number of features and the uh, bridge. 
So in this plot, what we do is that we do random feature predictor on only four training points. So you see this, it's always the same four training points here. And uh, we, uh, we plot lots of different realization of this random feature predictor in these dotted blue lines. And we plot also the, the empirical mean in, uh, in, in black here. And we plot this for two ridge, ridge values. So here, the first line is for a very small ridge lambda 10 minus 4. And then for a larger ridge, lambda is equal to 0 0.1. And for different values of p, increasing the number of random features. And what we, what's interesting to observe is that in this underparameterized regime, so when p is equal to 2, uh, which is less than the four training points, then we see that actually even in this almost ridgeless regime when there's almost no ridge, actually the random feature predictors are, are not able to interpolate between the four points because we have only two degrees of freedom. We have only two parameters. And as such, it's not possible to, to fit the turning points. So we have this natural regularization effect. If we increase the number of features to four, we are at the transition between underparameterized to overparameterized. And we are actually able to fit the training uh, point set, the four points. But between these uh, training points, we see that the, all the random feature predictor, the, there is a huge variance in this predictor. And now if we further increase the number of features, then actually the variance uh, starts, we are able to avoid this explosion of variance. And if we further, further increase the number of features, then actually the variance vanishes and we have this concentration which leads to the convergence of the random feature predictor to the kernel predictor. And what's nice is that actually we see that if we take a larger uh, ridge lambda, we are able to avoid this explosion of variance, but we still see this regularization in the sense that there's a much stronger regularization in this first case when p is uh, for small p than for large p, even though the original ridge lambda is still the same among all these second lines. So that's the general behavior that we would like to describe. So our strategy, so what we want to study is the risk, uh, which is the mean square on distribution D. And we have the bias variance decomposition in the sense that the expected risk with respect to the sampling of the random feature is equal to the risk of the expected predictor plus the variance of the predictor. So the two things that we need to study is the expected predictor and the variance of, and the, variance of the predictor. And uh, our strategy to do that is to split the randomness of the features in two, the randomness on the training points, which is described by this uh, data matrix, and outside of the training points. And thanks to the Gaussian assumption, actually, it's, you, we can really disentangle these two types of uh, uh, randomness. And this leads us to the following lemma, which shows that the distribution of the, of, uh, the random feature predictor conditioned on the data matrix is Gaussian with uh, uh, an expectation and covariance that we describe. And because in the uh, overparameterized ridgeless regime, it turns out that the because the random feature particular is always able to interpolate the data, actually, the value of the random feature predictor on the training set is always equal to the labels, which means that y hat is equal to y. And thanks to this observation, actually, it's e easy to see that in the ridgeless overparameterized regime, then the expected random feature predictor is going to equal the kernel ridge predictor, uh, which shows this the fact that in this case, the random feature predictor is an unbiased estimator of the kernel predictor. However, outside of this regime, we get this implicit regularization, which shows that the expected random feature predictor is close to the kernel predictor with this effective ridge lambda tilde. And I can show you the behavior of the effective ridge as a function of gamma and for different values of the original ridge lambda. We see that as gamma goes to zero, we see an explosion of the effective ridge. So having fewer, uh, pa fewer parameters, fewer features leads to a much stronger regularization effect. And of course, increasing the ridge will also increase the, the effective ridge. And once now that we have this description of the expected uh, risk, a consequence is that the risk of the expected predictor is close to the risk of the kernel predictor. And that's exactly what we see numerically. We see again for this as a function of gamma and for different values of lambda, we plot 
the risk of the expected random feature predictor in these uh, red dots and the risk of the corresponding kernel predictor with the effective region, we see a very, very good match. So now we have the first description of the risk of the expected predictor, which was the first term in the bias bias decomposition. And now we just need to, to bound the variance. So that's exactly what we do. We bound the variance. And as a result, we get that the expected risk of random feature is close to the risk of kernel methods. But it's really important in this theorem to take, we need this lambda is bigger than zero. Actually, you see it really numerically in the sense that if you look at the dark uh, blue lines, so the, the, so the dots and full lines corresponds to the expected risk, whereas the uh, dotted lines corresponds to the um, risk of the expected predictor. And we see that in the dark blue case, there's a pretty, the, the two are pretty close. But actually, if you, and it's the case where the ridge is non-zero, but when the ridge is very small, very close to zero, actually, we see that when gamma is equal to one, we see a huge explosion, a huge disc discrepancy between the expected risk and the risk of the expected predictor. And actually, and this is what leads to this double descent curve, right? That the, the non monotonicity of the curve. And actually this, uh, Explosion of variance can be explained in terms of the derivative of the effective reach. So what happens is that, so the way we study the variance is that we decompose it in two terms. And actually, especially we, we are going to focus on the second term, which scales as the expectation of the norm of the optimal parameters. And it turns out that we can give a very good description of the norm of the uh, parameters in terms of the derivative of the effective reach here, which is this first term here in front, and another term which we don't need to study. And it turns out that we can show that uh, the effective reach converges to gamma over gamma minus one, which explodes when gamma is equal to one, of course. So we, we know that this derivative explodes at this point. And as a result of this explosion in gamma is equal to one, lambda is equal to zero, the parameter norm explodes, which leads the variance to explode and leads to the double descent curve. And if we plot in co comparison the, the value of the derivative of the effective reach and the variance of the predictor, we see a very similar trend between the two. So that's all I wanted to say. So we showed the implicit regularization of random features. We have shown the concentration of the random feature predictor around the kernel predictor with the effective reach lambda tilde, leading to a similarity between the expected loss of random features and the loss of kernel methods. And finally, we showed that the double descent curve can be in, understood in terms of the derivative of the effective reach. Thank you. Bye-bye.